for December 31st to be included in this year's giving. Now here's Pastor Orlando with today's message. Praise God. Praise God. Well, first, Merry Day After Christmas Day. So <laughs> it's great seeing everybody here, and God bless you, everyone who is at home. Um, just thank you for joining us today, and um, thank you, worship team. That was amazing. Had me over there uh, wanting to come up here and grab a mic and sing with you, but I knew I better not. So, but thank you, worship team. You guys are always great. Um, just also wanted to point out for anyone who is watching us online, and for those of you who are here, when you go back and watch the messages or listen to the uh, coffee and conversations, um, if you're watching it on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe button. So what that does, it, it, it causes the algorithm for YouTube to send the messages out. The more that you like, the more that you subscribe, it send the messages out to uh, more people so other people around the world can hear the good news coming from Wardenful Gospel. Amen? Amen. So, I pray everybody had a great Christmas yesterday that uh, you got all the gifts that you guys wanted. I didn't get my Ferrari, but I'm pretty sure it's on its way. Um, so, if you guys can go ahead and um, pass the message on to my wife and see if she can go ahead and send that Ferrari because, you know, if she, I get blessed with it, she'll get blessed with it too, right? Amen. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, let us open in prayer. Lord God of Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, for her those of us who didn't deserve it, who don't deserve it, all of us, I know I didn't, and yet you saw past our sin, you saw past our shame, you saw past our guilt, and you saw something worth sacrificing Jesus for upon that cross, and filling us with the Holy Spirit, and calling us your children, and we, we thank you for washing us whiter than snow and allowing us to be able to come into your presence and call you Holy Father. I just pray that the word that you have today will touch the hearts of those who are here and those who are listening online and even those who are going to listen at another date and time. I just pray that you prick our hearts and cause us to see you in a different way, to see you and draw closer to you and to understand what we are called to do. Thank you, honor you, give you glory. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we're in the book of Matthew and at this point in Matthew, Jesus has already preached his Sermon on the Mount. He preached in many synagogues, and he's called out the religious leaders of that time. And at this point in Matthew, Jesus had already healed many, many people, performed many miracles, and cast out demon after demon after demon. And Jesus, even at this point, empowered his disciples to do the same. He prophesied of his death, and then he was crucified. He died, and now he is risen again. So we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 28, going to be reading from verses 16 through 20. And here, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and it reads, now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. So the title of today's message is Last Message. Last Message. And today is December 26th. It's the day after Christmas. And for some of us, we spent the day with our families and friends. And even though that we couldn't have a grandiose affair, we, we spent time with our families and friends at a smaller uh, level because of COVID restrictions. And we opened gifts and a lot of us were eating and we were laughing, playing games with one another, just having a, a great time and, and enjoying each other's presence. And some of us, whether we were at home or whether we went somewhere, we were just spending time with one another and enjoying that time. And we know that we as Christians, even though we know that December 25th is not the actual birth date of Jesus Christ, we celebrate on that day the birth of our Savior, the one who came to save his people from their sins, as spoken of in Matthew chapter 1, verses 21. And after we're done celebrating and after we're done eating, and most of us, like myself, as we wake up from that food coma, we uh, say goodbye to our friends and say goodbye to our families and we go on our separate ways. Now, getting together and celebrating the birth of our Savior, it's, it's, it's great. Don't get me wrong, it's great. I, I love it. I love spending time with my family, watching my kids open their gifts, pull out their Nerf guns, and shooting each other in the eye. Don't, don't get me wrong. I get a good laugh from it. It's great. But how many of us, when we're together with our friends and family, have taken the time to talk about more than just the virgin birth? How many of us have taken that time to talk about more than just the wise men and, and, and the shepherds, to talk about more than just the baby in the manger? Because I know that there are many of us who know people who are not saved who know people in this time who are struggling and who are hurting, who know people in this time who need to hear more than just the gifts that were given to Jesus, but they need something of substance. They need to be filled. They, they need to, to, to realize that there is a God who gives them hope. We have friends, family, co-workers who, who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So how many of us have taken the opportunity to go past the nativity story and go straight to the gospel? To say, yes, our Savior was born in a manger, but he didn't stay there that we have a heavenly father who so loved the world, the world including you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, who is Jesus, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in Jesus, shall not perish but have everlasting life. How many of us have taken the opportunity to tell people that regardless of the mess that they're in, regardless of the sins that they have committed, that the Bible says, the Word of God says in Romans chapter 5 and 8, that, that God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, and then we stop. 
we stop at that moment and we go back to the word we and we tell them this we is not just you but it includes me Even though I may be standing here with the mic I may be standing here with the Bible but I need salvation I need to be saved I need a savior too and we and we tell them that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and we do this to not be seen that we're pointing at them and saying you need to repent you need to change change and you need to come to Christ but we'll be, be seeing that as we're holding their hand and saying we need to repent we need to save you and we will go together to get them to accept the word of God and then we'll continue on and say and this Christ this Jesus he died for us and according to Romans chapter 8, 38, it says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ. And we, and we assure them that, yes, our Savior was born in a manger. Yes, he was given gifts by by the wise men and yes he 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 endured hardships even as a child when Herod was sent out to try to kill him but guess what he's that that the father that the father caused Jesus to take up a cross to die a death that was meant for you and for me because he loved us so understand that there is nothing you have there is nothing that you're doing and that there is nothing that you can do that will separate the love of God from you how many of us on this day of Christmas Have we taken the time to explain the reason for the birth? The reason for the manger? How many of us have taken the time to explain the gospel of Jesus Christ? To teach them to observe all that Jesus have commanded? to take his last message and do what he commanded for us to do in this great commission, and that is to go out and to teach people of him. Every time we turn on the news and get on the internet and grab our phones, we hear about suffering. We hear about death. We hear about poverty. We hear about struggles. Time is drawing near. And there are people out there who are dying without knowing Jesus. We have to take this gospel and preach it as if it were our last message. We have to preach it and teach it with urgency. We have to preach it and teach it with compassion and with love. We have to get to the point to where we can be like the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 20 and 9. He said, if I say I will not mention him or speak anymore in his name, there is in my heart that it was a burning fire shut up in my bones and I, and I am weary with holding it in and I I cannot. We have to get to the point that we can't stay quiet. We have to get to the point that we're tired of seeing people suffer. We have to, we have to get to the point to where we're burdened with the souls of the lost. And we can't hold it in because we know that everyone needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And we have to go out and speak his word as if it was fire in our bones. You see, Christ doesn't need to 
be here walking around on this earth now speaking his word because he has you to speak these words. He has me here to speak his words. We are his ambassadors and we should be here representing him. He has us to speak to the lost. He has us to speak to the brokenhearted. He has us to speak to the world and to tell them of the good news of Jesus Christ, to tell them of his gospel, to tell them like in Acts 16, 31, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household will be saved. There's a famous preacher by the name of Charles Hayden Spurgeon, and he said, Brethren, the heathen are perishing. Shall we let them perish? His name, speaking of Christ, his name is blasphemed. Shall we be quiet and still? The honor of Christ is cast into the dust, and his foes revile his person and resist his throne. Shall we, his soldiers, suffer this and not find our hands Feeling for the hilt of our sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Outside of these four walls, outside of this church, there are nations, people dying, hurt, and alone, crying because they need to just feel loved, trapped because they're, they're trapped because of the lies that the enemy has said, has told them over the years. And But we have to realize that we have the remedy. We have the word. We have the Savior. We have the Holy Spirit. And, and for the dying, we have the word of God that gives life. And, and for the crying, we have the word of our Savior who says that he will wipe away all tears. And for the trap, we have the word of Jesus Christ who came to set the captives free. But in order for them to hear, we must tell them. We must tell them about Jesus. In Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, it reads, How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. We have in the Great Commission have been sent. We have been told to go out these four walls. We have been told to go out and reach people. And, and I know that we're in a place where we, we are told we're supposed to have six feet. So I'm not talking about running up to the person across the street and hugging them because we have to be wise. But understand this. We have platforms. We have social media. We have other avenues to where we can reach the people with the God gospel of Jesus Christ. We can reach the people so they'll know that they have someone who can hear their hurt. We have someone who can, who, can, who can hear the prayers in their heart. We have someone who can strengthen their bones. We have the word of God who can change their life and remove them from their hardships and change their circumstance. We have the God. We have, we have Jesus who will now give them hope and show them that he he is the only way to the Father. We have to go out and teach them, preach to them, disciple them, or they won't know. And the onus is on us. 
we are to go and tell people that even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of this chaos, there is one who can bring peace. Even in the midst of their struggles and trials, even in the midst of their pain, there is one who can bring spiritual healing. Even in the midst of the turmoil, there is one who can calm the noise. In the midst of their weakness, there is one who can bring them strength. Even in the midst of their storm, there is one who can say, peace, be still. And we are not only to tell them of the good news, to just say, that baby in the manger grew became a man, took up a cross, and died for your sins. Have a blessed day and Merry Christmas. But we are to disciple them. Discipling requires sacrifice on our part. To spend time with them, to teach them how to be a Christian, to be able to answer the questions that they may have. There are many who've fallen away from the faith, and they say because they had questions that they could not have, that they could not get answered. But we have the answer. And we have to sacrifice a little bit of our time to make sure that these co-workers, these family members, these fellow students, or whomever it is, not just hear the gospel, but know the gospel, get intimate with the gospel, have the gospel applied to their life to where now when they walk, they, they, everything that they say and do shows the gospel. They worship in their movement. They worship God in what they say. Let everything that they do give glory to God. And then now when people see them, they will start wondering what do they have and want the same God that they have. But it starts with discipleship and showing people who God is to disciple them in love. Because in John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Love is more than just a word, but it's action. If you see someone walking towards a cliff blindfolded, if you have a good heart, you're going to run out to them. You're going to yell and do whatever you can to stop them, to slow them down, to let them know that they're walking to their demise. Well, understand this, that the lost are the ones walking to the cliff, darkened by by the, the, the lies of the enemy, can't see. But yet we have Jesus who said he is the light of the world. We have to present this light, this love to them so that they can see and realize that they're walking to their death. I'm going to be closing with this. Some of you may know of this gentleman by the name of John Harper. If you were to look him up in an encyclopedia, you would get something that reads like this. Reverend John Harper, a Baptist minister, traveled with his daughter Nina Harper and Miss Jessie Leitch, who's his sister, and they're traveling from London en route to Chicago. Reverend Harper was on his way to Chicago to begin a series of revival meetings at the Moody Church located at West Chicago and LaSalle Avenue. 
He had been at the church during November, December, and January of 1911 and 1912, and his success there resulted in his being recalled to conduct the second series of meetings. On the evening of April 4th, 14th, the Reverend Harper and Miss Lage were standing on a deck admiring the sunset. It would be beautiful in the morning, remarked Reverend Harper before retiring for the night. After the collision, Harper was awakened, and he awakened his daughter, picked her up, and wrapped her in a blanket before carrying her up to deck A. There he kissed her goodbye and handed her to a crewman who put her into a lifeboat, her into lifeboat 11 with Miss Lage. Reverend Harper went down with the ship. So this Reverend Harper, John Harper, you go, go, Google him, go to encyclopedia. That's all it says. See, but what is missing from this little bio? What, what it doesn't tell you is that Reverend John Harper was aboard the Titanic when it sank. The Titanic, which is more than just a movie, but an actual ship in the early 1900s. The Titanic that was supposedly the unsinkable ship hit an iceberg and it sank. The ship, which had around 2,200 people, only had lifeboats for approximately 1,200. And not all of those 1,200 got on the ship. So the story goes that about 1,500 people perished on the Titanic. John Harper, who had kissed and said goodbye to his little daughter and and told his sister goodbye and put them on the lifeboat. He stayed on the ship. And the story goes that as the ship broke in two, John Harper was praying. And then he fell into the icy water. And it says that John Harper was swimming from person to person, screaming, Are you saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. There was this one gentleman. Out of the 1,500 people that fell into the icy water, only six survived. One of them goes by the name of Steve Crane. And this is an excerpt from his testimony. It says, for years after the, after the Titanic went down, a young Scotman rose in a meeting in Hamilton, Canada, and said, I am a survivor of the Titanic. When I was drifting along on a spar that awful night, the tide brought Mr. John Harper of Glasgow on a piece of wreck near me. Man, he said, are you saved? No, I said, I am not. He replied, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The waves bore him away, but strange to say, brought him back a little later. And he said, are you saved now? No, I said, I cannot honestly say that I am. He said again, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And shortly after, he went down. And there, alone in the night, with two miles of water under me, I believed. I am John Harper's last convert. I'm not saying to wait until an extreme situation happens before we go out and preach the gospel. But when we look at the story of John Harper, we see a man who knew the importance of the gospel. We see a man who, who had a desire and a yearning to present the gospel to the lost. So I'm not saying to go jump in the sea and yelling at passengers on a cruise ship telling them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But what I am saying is that there are people outside of these four walls who, who are drowning, metaphorically drowning in their sins. 
and we have the gospel, and we need to present the gospel to them as if it were our last message. We need to present it with fire, with passion, and with love. Because for some that we come across, it may very well be the last time that they're able to hear it. Last message. The last message of Christ to reach everyone. And that is what we need to do. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. Yes, we thank you for saving us. And yes, we thank you for forgiving our sins. And yes, we thank you for calling us your children. But you have now given us the opportunity to go out and to reach those who need to have the hope that we have, who, who need to feel the love that we feel. Those who are afraid, we have the word to say that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Those who are weak, we have the words to say that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. Those who feel that they have to get right on their own before they come to you need to know that we have all sinned. We are not saved by works, but by your grace. And that you're going to continue to work in us until you call us home. We, we have the word to those who need to know that there is a father who loves them regardless of where they're at. And it just wants us to turn away from our sins and come to you. Father, we, we thank you because you have given us the word. And I just pray that you empower us, that you cause us to be bold, that you cause us to be brave enough to go out and speak your word and don't care what the world says, but it's about what you have told us to do. Let us preach, teach your message as if it were our last message. So the world would know that you are a loving God and you are God alone. We thank you. We honor you. We give you glory in the name and the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.